Alright? Other than that, fellas, look. I tell you guys all the time. You got to want it. Okay? I'm putting forth the effort as a head coach, and I'm going to continue to put forth the effort. There's nobody in America that will, that can say that Coach Mitchell didn't try. Alright? Or doesn't do his best. Okay? I'm going to put forth the effort. I always will. Meet me halfway. Alright? So we got to get a fast start. That means on offense and on defense. Does everybody understand? Y'all yes, got to meet me halfway. You got to give that effort. Okay? You got to give that effort back to me. Alright? Everybody got it? Go, go. Hey, let's go, fellas. Stay focused from warm ups, from the jump. Alright? Let's get after it tonight. Line up, three, family, six, one, two, three. Five, right. four, five, six, family. family. skill level was. I mean, there were guys that weren't that talented, but I mean, everybody just had that dog in them. Talbot was it. Talbot was the powerhouse. That was the basketball school back in the day. You know what I'm saying? Um, but just that dog that everybody had, man, that was just different. But, you know, you put that jersey on and you got the lines across the chest, you got Talbot across the chest. I mean, it means something. Everybody knew, like, when Talbot came into the gym, you know, you gonna have a problem. And when I was playing, we were still at that point. I mean, my senior year, we were like 21 and 7, and we made it to the second round of regionals. I mean, we were still up there. We were still kind of somewhat of a powerhouse in the Beach District. Uh, we were always one of the top two teams up there with Lansdowne. And uh, we took pride in that. We took a lot of pride in that, and we didn't want that to go away. And putting that jersey on, and putting those shorts on, and strapping up, I mean, it was time to go to war. We were focused, we were ready to go. I took a lot of pride in it. I still take pride in it to this day. Cross over it. What did I, what did I always say? You don't have to start with a pass. Drive downhill. If it's an open lane, drive downhill. Okay? Now listen, use it wisely though. Don't drive downhill every time just because you want to. That one right, that right there, we used to do the ball to Tyler and we turned it over. That was when you just drove downhill. His man was hugged up on him. The head is wide open. I mean, I knew I had to rebuild the program. I knew I was going to start from scratch. And I knew I was going to have a young team. A lot of sophomores, two really good freshmen, um, a couple of juniors, and I just kept a few seniors. Uh, but I knew I was going to rebuild. So, I mean, the expectation was basically just to get guys in here and basically just start the new foundation. But I'm throwing them into the fire, and the only way you learn is through experience. So, we got guys that are getting that experience now. And as of right now, you know, we're getting that experience, getting our butt kicked a little bit. But, you know, I definitely can see it being a positive in the future for us. Um, and we're trending in the right direction. I mean, we really are. We just gotta learn how to, if we're up, we gotta stay up. We gotta learn how to win. But that only comes through experience. The, the times have changed, man. Like, it's kinda like, you gotta try to get these kids to understand, like, you gotta want it. You gotta want it. Like, as a coach, we want it. But the kids gotta want it as well. And I think my guys want it. Um, it's just the way that society is now is just we got to find a way to try to bring that out of them the right way and not bring it out of them in a negative way. Um, that way they'll be able to respond, you know, in a positive way towards us. But you know, we're so young right now. Um, I think once we continue to play, once we, you know, go through the lumps, you know, get some more wins here and there, they're gonna they're gonna see like if they really put it together, if they really really want it, you know, we'll see some success. We're gonna get up and down with JV for a little bit, okay? One, okay, let's be unselfish, okay? We're here to work on some stuff. Not just out here just trying to get buckets, all right? Oh, obviously I want you to. You know what I mean, all right? Two, do the stuff that we're talking about, like stuff we just worked on, use it, do it, okay? When we're getting up and down so we can see what it looks like. Even if you make a mistake, don't be upset, okay? Just keep playing, okay? We're gonna get up and down, so we're not gonna stop every, now we'll stop every now and then, all right? We're not gonna stop every single time to show you again and again. Still weird like being out there at home games like standing up and coaching and like watching the guys out there and like knowing like I was out here playing as well. It's humbling, I tell you that it's humbling and it's almost still a little surreal like being like the head of this like and I, I walk these halls, I played basketball here, you know I've been in these guys shoes. It's almost like the program is like my child a little bit like I'm trying to take good care of it 
And um, again, just being, just being the head coach of the school that I went to definitely, you know, holds a strong place in my heart. Hey, hey, hey. kids that's all that want it. They really are. I mean, there are kids in here that want it, and even if they're not as talented as some other kids, like, I will pay attention. I mean, if you really, really, really want it, effort can, can shine over talent any day. If you're able to bust your butt in practice and give that effort in practice, it'll translate into the game. It translates into the game. College coaches see that. They want to come to practice. They see you busting your butt in practice. I mean, it's, it's not, it's not rocket science, right? Give the effort, you know, put 100% work in, you'll be successful. Yeah, I'll let you guys know, I mean, I'll, I'll tell the guys straight up, like, look, I'm, I'm watching film, I'm taking notes, you know, Pay attention to this. I'm going to watch teams play. I like to kind of try to use that to get them to realize, like, look, I'm working my butt off. You know, I can't play though. All right, I can't play. Um, you guys are the ones that are playing. You guys are the ones shoot the ball, shoot the layups, defending. You know, y'all got to do those things. You know, I'm going to try to put you in the right spots so that you can be successful. Um, and you know, to make sure that they're trying to buy into what we're selling. But I think sticking to the standards that I set for them and not go not going away from it. I've talked to college coaches, I've talked to other high school coaches in the D&B, and everybody says the same thing. Like, don't change what you're doing. If you feel it's going to work in the future, you got to stick to it, stick to your standards. And I think just holding them accountable, making sure that they continue to be disciplined with such a young team, and this being so new. I mean, nobody on our team has ever had standards like this on a basketball team. Expectations in the classroom, expectations on the court, off the court, a dress policy, all that stuff. They've never had this stuff before. It doesn't work the next day. It takes time. So it takes time. And I think just sticking to that, not going away from it, is gonna it's gonna work in the future. So Brian Worcester, he played here, he graduated in 05. He reached out when I got the job. And believe it or not, I kind of grew up with Brian. He was like good friends with my big brother. And he was always at our house when we were younger. Um, so I know, obviously I knew of him, I knew of his background, his family, but I wanted to make sure I had somebody with good values and of similar character as myself. So that was a no-brainer when I was able to talk with them, like he wanted to get back into coaching, obviously he graduated from Tallwood, he has a lot of pride in, in it. And then Kaleo, he's our, he was already here as an assistant coach, but me and him kind of just continued to just latch on to each other. We almost talked every single day, um, definitely a great motivator. Um, the, the guy can talk you into running through a wall. If you're tired and you're physically and mentally fatigued, that's when you got to execute like Coach says. We just walked through, bro. So Coach keeps saying, y'all don't know it. That's a damn lie, y'all know it. You just ran it 50 times against nobody. But as soon as Coach got energy, you know, speeding you guys up, the goal of the defense is speed you up. You guys are going to have to figure out how to slow the game down by knowing mentally where everything's going. You guys are going to have to learn how to triple threat, calm down, dribble jab, get some space, and just be calm. They're speeding you up. Now we can't run anything. That's it. If you can't do that, then we're going to continue to get the results we're good. Right? We're good enough to be good, but if you want to take us to the next level, you got to do that. He knows the right things to say. He does the right stuff. He's a great dude. Um, high basketball IQ from his playing days at Naval Academy and you know his coaching days now. And he um, he definitely influences me a lot. He motivates me. You know, he keeps me up when I'm getting all pissed off. He always says like, you gotta stop beating yourself up. You know, you're a bad coach. Stop beating yourself up. You know, Dave. I feel like I'm a horrible coach. Um, so having him around definitely builds my confidence up. So when I was up at Hanley High School, you know, we saw a lot of success. I mean, I was with that program the year they went. We went to states. Then we lost by one point to Jamestown in the semifinal game, state semifinals. The year after I left, they went to the state championship game against Lake Taylor and went to double overtime with them. The work that those guys put in, the discipline the style that they have up there, the guys bought into it. You know, they bought into it from the jump. And Coach Toten got them to buy into it. 
So, you know, he, every year they have this one word that everybody picks a word and they're going to live by that word throughout the whole season. And it's just something that, like, for the kids to go back and reflect on, like, okay, like, I'm struggling right now, you know, I got a couple guys who they chose the word confidence. I'm like, well, go back and look at your word. Your word is confidence. You chose that word for a reason. You're struggling right now. You just need to be confident in what you do. I chose the word patience. Young team, young coach, rebuilding a program that has high expectations because of what you guys did back in the day. I got to be patient. So there was times where I was stressing, 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 staying up late at night, just being frustrated. I went back and looked at my own work. And, um, you know, I looked myself in the mirror and I was like, you know, what, I need, what do I need to do to be a little more patient? Do we all want to win a state championship? Yes. Everybody wants to win a state championship. I really want to continue to try to use basketball as a way to help the kids be successful. And basketball helped me get to that point. Basketball helped me, um, you know, how to work hard. Um, how to stay disciplined, how to stick to things, not quit, never give up. Um, but if I can get my guys to be successful on the court and off the court, the wins will come.